Wow. Um, three very interesting perspectives on the value of biosecurity, um, a sort of economic at the farm gate look at uh, biosecurity, a little bit of sympathy for the regulator, thanks, um, a way to manage the regulatory uh, world and some thinking about that. And, and obviously from Lucy, the importance commercially, the value to a region and the partnership approach. We have about 15 minutes for questions and I invite you uh, to direct your questions if you have them. I think we've got microphones around yep, at the front. Um, if you could identify yourself and if there's a particular uh, panellist that you'd like to answer, that would be great. We have a, we have a taker, thank you. Sorry, Andrew talked about the, the opposite end of the rope where there are um, issues about cost and, and this sort of thing. I'd like to um, ask Michael, what can be done to increase the speed of biosecurity protection to the farm? Um, I have clients who found out two years, 25 of them actually, who found out two years later that they had bought a suspect dairy cow and now they're, all of their herds are suspect. It would seem that that's a fairly long period of time and by the time they know, it's extraordinarily late. You want a crack? I want a quick crack. He's going to have a crack at that. I'm going to have Thank a... Thank you for your question. Um, uh, uh, the short answer, not being a, a bovine scientist, is uh, I'm, I'm not going to very be able to give you a very direct answer. I mean, there's two... Two key things, one of, the, one of which is going to be um, the technology of doing the appropriate test and just how long that takes to resolve. Um, but the, then there's all the things that Andrew talked about, which is where the reform process is at, which is trying to uh, make more effective where we look, where we test, how we conduct them, so that um, essentially the, a lot of what Andrew's talking about has the implication of speeding up the process because it's using the resources that you have in a very careful and targeted way. So that's a very vague answer. Um, I can't give you a very detailed answer about um, particular dairy uh, issues because, again, you'll have, for some of these things, just the testing process itself is going to have inherent delays built into it. Hello, Dr. Miller. Has it been answered? Uh, yes, Hugh Miller. I guess these days I'm a biosecurity consultant, let's call it that. Freelancer. Freelance, yeah. I was really interested, Michael, in, in your work to put some, I guess, a little bit more hard numbers around the notion of the value of biosecurity at the farm level. And certainly, we're not talking about any institutionalised uh, insurance arrangements for producers. But most producers do actually invest in a number of activities that benefit them through the levy system. And I was just wondering, now that you've done that little bit of work, the opportunity for industries to look at their portfolio of investment between R&D, marketing and biosecurity, do you think there's an opportunity for them to use that information to consider the balance of that portfolio? Yeah, th um, that's a good question. And um, I think uh, so it's a, it's a term I used just once in the talk and it probably slipped by, I used the term insurance a number of times, but really what biosecurity is, is more correctly described as self-protection. It's something that changes the risk of something happening rather than compensates you after it does happen. Um, and by and large, <clears throat> uh, in, in the macro sense, uh, that self-protection is a national issue and a public policy issue and hence the department has this important regulatory role. Um, but that isn't to say that there can't be downscale, uh, more, you know, closer to the ground and closer to the, to the farm gate actions going on. So um, the short answer is yes. I mean, I hope as we produce this that we are able to enter a dialogue. But I probably want to restate the emphasis that I finished with, which is the purpose of such dialogue isn't for the Commonwealth regulator to cost shift away to, uh, to private agencies. but but that um, the industry itself may wish to look at risks that it thinks it can help invest in and control. Um, but it also may be uh, contributing by contributing to the science of research program that's going on 
partly through several and other places, to look at how biosecurity is managed and to help essentially the overall effort. Uh, and I might add uh, the ABES report on the value of biosecurity mid-year expected release. Yeah, well, uh, hopefully well and truly by then. Yeah. Other questions? Here comes one. Microphone three. Thank you. Yeah, hi, I'm a UK Nuffield scholar. I'm also a vet, farm animal vet. So it was really interesting to come to this uh, sort of uh, conference where we're looking at biosecurity, because in the UK, obviously, we, we pay no attention to that whatsoever. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's not a joke. We're um, for it here. My practice has had, in the last seven years, four out of the last five notifiable disease outbreaks involved in it. We were in the southeast of England. We obviously have a lot of vector pests that come in. But uh, when we had uh, Blue Tongue in 2007 8, we believe it came in with uh, recreational yeah. uh, horses bringing in yeah. uh, bedding to a world show jumping yeah. championships. I mean, how do you manage that on your 1010001? Uh, <laughs> Look at it. Um, I'm just intrigued. It was, a, it was a really interesting sort of talk from that. I'd just like to see what you think of that. Well, that's a one. That's a one. That's unequivocally a one. Yeah. Um, the um, the only way you can f the only way you can sort of detect those kinds of events is by looking for them, and 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 that that that's one of the ends of the rope, that the of the the biosecurity rope that's pulling the regulator and saying, well, um, don't let horses in unregulated. Um, I I'm pretty confident that. Um, uh, Australia's quarantine position on the importation of live horses is uh, is quite rigorous, um, but I, I know that's no comfort. Um, so it's uh, the best you can do is is uh, analyze the data you have available to you and and try to invent ways that the system can be circumvented um, in and um, try to recover from those. I might just add a little bit to that as the person who has to decide how much regulation to put into some of those. Um, that, that is the tricky business of the regulator. Um, certainly we have, um, and you're quite right, uh, the regulation of live horses into Australia is quite intense. The, the processes that the importers need to manage, the processes that the department needs to manage are quite intense for a variety of disease profiles. Um, and it is difficult because uh, there's a, always a, a, a tricky business in regulation about how, how weighty to make it against a disease profile and a commercial interest. Um, other commodities that come into Australia, um, if, if, you know, take Lucy's example, that you don't want cherries, for example, perishing on their, their export pathway outways, and, and we manage the biosecurity on the outgo as well. Um, so there's a very tricky balance between the risk the level of regulation and the understanding of the commercial uh, practice. We put the risk right at the top and it is a one. We pick um, some, some disease profiles, the sorts of ones that Michael were talking about, are ones. Other questions? Well, you know, it's one minute to go, so c can I commend you for attending? Um, can we commend our speakers for very, very interesting insights to the, the value of biosecurity um, from a number of perspectives, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you.